So, Bob, getting rid of this incredibly petty profusion of rules and regulations, interprovincial trade barriers, that keep us from buying, selling, and working anywhere in our national home, why is that important to Canada? Well, simply because uh, if Canadians can't do business right across the country without, uh, without barriers, without you know, uh, restrictions, then it's going to make it our economy, well it does, I think it uh, reduces our productivity and it certainly reduces our sense of being Canadian. Uh, if the most important thing is that you're a citizen of say BC as opposed to being a Canadian, uh, then that doesn't do much for the country. Now it's interesting you mentioned sense of being Canadian because some people will say, oh well, the Canadian way is not to have unilateral federal action of the sort proposed in the paper. The Canadian way is to have cooperate, work with the provinces. And this is something you've had a lot of experience on, an experience that you're increasingly disillusioned by. Yeah, and because it doesn't work. Uh, because in fact what the provinces are doing while they're negotiating ag agreements is not necessarily getting rid of barriers or not doing things with, that allow people to, to actually do business. They're actually uh, protecting their own interests in many ways. So what you get when in an interprovincial agreement is not something that protects the rights of the individual to do business. It, get, it protects the rights of the province in some cases, not in all cases to be fair, in some cases to create barriers and therefore is um, self-defeating. The only way, the only way it appears that you can, you can deal with that particular problem, in fact, is to establish a national bill of rights, economic rights, as we put in our, in our document, which says you're a Canadian and this is what you can do in terms of working doing business, investing in every province across the country. And if you don't do that, you have nothing. It's not clear, it's just a, a, a more asset of, of, um, of agreements, as you said, petty, <laughs> petty agreements. They're not necessarily petty, but they're, they're things which, pro which provinces see to be important for themselves. And that's not unimportant, but surely it's not as important as the right of a Canadian to be a Canadian anywhere in the, in the country. Going back 16 years, you were a senior public servant involved in negotiating the Federal Provincial Agreement on Internal Trade. Very high hopes for it at the time, but these have largely turned to disillusionment. Indeed. Yeah, well, indeed, but the almost from the beginning, uh, it began to become something that uh, if you'd been thinking about a, an open Canadian market, uh, it began to become less of a Canadian market because the provinces began to do exactly what I just described. The first thing that we did, uh, the problems is that when, excuse me, governments, because the federal government was involved here, when the federal government proposed the negotiation of the agreement, was begin to establish exceptions. Uh, and there were two kinds of exceptions. One was that they took things out altogether, like securities, uh, financial uh, institutions, that kind of thing. Uh, but the other kind of exception is, instead of having a set of rules that described uh, the market and defined the, the national market, they kind of got the rules but then put them aside and then had a whole lot of sectoral chapters. And I know that sounds complicated, but it's not. They, so that in fact what you had is, a, is an agreement which was limited, complicated, uh, and virtually inaccessible for, for an individual. Now, in Citizen of One, Citizen of the Whole, one of the important points about the idea of letting the provinces handle it is that it's hard for governments to police themselves. The AIT does have enforcement mechanisms, but they're not one of its strengths, they're one of its critical weaknesses in your view. Absolutely, uh, because in effect it's, uh, if, you, if you want to try and deal with a barrier which you encounter, uh, you don't know where to go, and the only place you can go is to, is to governments, and governments will either decide that they're going to solve it, or they'll decide they're not going to solve it, and if they don't decide, uh, they leave it to you as a private citizen to try and solve, uh, you're into uh, huge expenditures of time and money, and I mean huge. I mean, the, uh, there has been eight disputes since the agreement was in place. I did five of them, um, and they would take a minimum of a year and a half before you would come to a, a, a conclusion, a panel report, uh, and all the expenditures of money. Now, you, if you're a businessman, or even if you're a, a person who wants to move from another, you can't, uh, I mean, that, that doesn't work. That simply doesn't work because uh, you don't have the time uh, you know, to, to wait to, to, to encounter, to deal with those things. So it's, you not only have to have a set of rules, but they have to be easily enforceable, not ones that take you forever. Uh, otherwise, 
a businessman or a person who just shrug their shoulders and figure out what to do next. I mean, what else do you? And if, if a panel does in the end say, okay, there is a breach of the agreement here, can they order the offending province to get rid of the rule that doesn't fit the AIT? No. Uh, they've recently introduced some changes to the dispute resolution process, which is what that is called, uh, so that a, a government uh, who doesn't implement the panel report can be penalized. Um, and there's also a, a, a provision in the agreement which allows for sort of countermeasures, retaliation basically for a, for a barrier. But the last, let me just deal with that, uh, is absurd, right? Because what you're doing when you retaliate between provinces is you're creating barriers. You're not getting rid of them. Uh, the monetary penalty uh, is too small to make a difference. For example, uh, let's use the case of colored margarine, which is now finally legal in, uh, legal in Quebec after many, many, many years. Um, the penalty is for Quebec would be $5 million maximum. That's it. So if you were the dairy farmers in, uh, in Quebec and you were confronted with that solution, uh, the solution would be give them the $5 million bucks. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to them. Uh, what they should be if you're going to use a penalty is not $5 million bucks, period, but $5 million bucks every year for as long as you, you have the thing in place. Uh, so the enforcement measure doesn't really work, but, and the only way to do that is to, is to use the, the court system. I mean, where, in fact, the, you know, our, that's why we have a justice system. And that's what sort of strikes you as completely irrational about these interprovincial agreements. Because, in fact, when you look at the Constitution, we have the structure to establish, as we say in our report, you have the structure to establish a charter of rights, the rules, and you have a system for enforcing them. It's called the courts. So what are we doing with all these interprovincial agreements? So it seems with the AIT that what we have is a cooperative process without cooperation and an enforcement mechanism without enforcement. The paper offers a very different and much more promising approach. Yes. And in fact, the, really the only, the only way when you stop to think about it, if the notion is that you want to establish the rights of Canadians to do business, to, to work, to do whatever, right across the country as Canadians, there's only one way to solve that. That's to establish a set of rules which says, here are your rights, and if you don't get your rights, there are the courts. You know, and so there is no, truly there is no, no other way to do it. And go back to what we talked about earlier, because the agreements between provinces are agreements not to get rid of barriers necessarily, but to get rid of some barriers, but to also keep some, and to allow them to protect their interests. And as you said, without any mechanism for, for enforcement that works.